There have been some exciting developments recently as SpaceX has just released updates and fresh footage of the S-34 static fire test. While some observations have highlighted minor issues with the test, they are unlikely to pose significant concerns. Additionally, progress on Flight 8 hardware and beyond continues to accelerate, with Flight 10 promising to reach a key development milestone. Meanwhile, SpaceX has achieved yet another major win, being selected by NASA to launch a high-profile mission. Let's dive into all the details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starbase has been exceptionally active in recent days, with continuous static fire tests pushing the boundaries of what SpaceX has attempted so far. One test in particular stood out, the static fire of Ship 34, which took place at night and showcased impressive new capabilities. The long-duration burn not only marked a major step forward for the vehicle, but also helped SpaceX gather critical data to improve future flights. As always, after such a significant test, the SpaceX community eagerly awaited official updates to gain further insights and see new footage. Those updates have now arrived. In the first major update, SpaceX released a video featuring close-up footage of the static fire, along with the message, Starship Long Duration Static Fire Ahead of the 8th Flight Test. This gave us a chance to experience the test again from multiple angles, making it even more spectacular than it was on the original testing day. SpaceX also emphasized the key aspect of this test, the long duration, where the engines burned for nearly a full minute. This was a major milestone, allowing the company to analyze how the vehicle and its propulsion systems handled prolonged stress. SpaceX's second update provided even more technical details, stating, The extended firing tested new hardware and cycled the six Raptor engines through multiple thrust levels to recreate different conditions seen within the propulsion system during flight. Data from the test will inform upgrades to the ship's hardware and flight profile ahead of the next launch. This explanation shed light on why the test included so many unprecedented elements. Instead of a simple ignition check, SpaceX used this opportunity to thoroughly examine new hardware, particularly after issues encountered during Flight 7. By adjusting the thrust levels multiple times throughout the burn, the company simulated various conditions that Starship will experience in flight, ensuring that the engines remain stable under different stresses. This approach is crucial as SpaceX works to overcome previous problems, especially the fuel leak that contributed to challenges in earlier test flights. Once S-34 is transported back to the production site, it'll undergo further upgrades based on the results of this test. These improvements will play a key role in ensuring that the next flight is more successful. Beyond SpaceX's official statements, the released images and footage revealed several additional insights. One particularly interesting observation was that the liquid oxygen tank appeared to be fully loaded, while the methane tank was only partially filled. This is a detail that was not as apparent in previous tests but it provides clues about how SpaceX is managing fuel distribution during static fires. Another significant highlight was the footage captured from beneath the test system, showing the six Raptor engines igniting in full force. Capturing such images is incredibly challenging due to the extreme heat, pressure, and vibrations in the test environment. Yet through their advanced camera setups, SpaceX managed to provide some of the most detailed views of the static fire process to date. Interestingly, while the test was largely successful, additional video footage from independent sources hinted at potential issues. Some observers noticed unusual debris in the massive dust cloud that formed around the test stand. In a left rear view of S-34, small glowing fragments could be seen flying through the air. Based on initial analysis, some speculate that this was molten slag from the flame trench system, indicating that parts of the test stand were damaged by the immense force of the engines. However, the extent of the damage remains unclear, and we will have to wait for an official update from SpaceX to determine whether any repairs will be necessary. Despite these observations, it's important to recognize that this test pushed the system beyond previous limits. It was not just a milestone for the vehicle itself, but also for the testing infrastructure at Starbase. Since this was the first time the system endured such an intense and prolonged burn, any issues that arose are part of the learning process. 
These challenges will help SpaceX refine the test stand, reinforcing it for even more demanding trials in the future. Overall, the test was an overwhelming success, surpassing expectations. The next step for S-34 will be a thorough inspection at Megabay 2. Immediately after the test, SpaceX folded the ship's flaps, signaling its imminent move to the production site. The transport was carefully coordinated with road closures, ensuring safe passage for the vehicle. With both S-34 and B-15 progressing smoothly, all signs point toward an upcoming launch. If the next launch succeeds, it'll mark another major step toward achieving fully reusable spaceflight, an essential milestone in SpaceX's broader vision for Mars colonization and beyond. Meanwhile, preparations for future Starship missions are ramping up at an impressive pace. At the production site, the first segment of S-36, the ship designated for Flight 10, has now made its appearance. This section includes both the nose cone and the payload bay, signaling a significant milestone in development. A particularly notable detail about S-36 is its newly integrated landing pin system. Unlike S-35, which lacks a functional setup, S-36 features a real landing pin mechanism that appears to align with the designated positions observed on S-35. However, based on its size, this system is noticeably smaller than the landing pins on Super Heavy, meaning it'll not be compatible with the Chopstick Pad A setup. This strongly suggests that S-36 is intended to land on Chopstick Pad B, a system currently under construction. With this crucial addition, speculation is mounting that Flight 10 could mark the first ever attempt to catch a returning ship using the chopstick mechanism. The development deviates from earlier predictions, which anticipated that S-35 and Flight 9 would be the first to undertake this effort. Instead, S-35, which currently only features placeholders for a future landing pin system, might serve as a platform to validate the structural viability of these designated areas in flight. This would allow SpaceX to refine the system before integrating it into later ships, including S-36. Consequently, it now appears that both flights 9 and 10 will conduct ocean landings. While this might initially seem disappointing, it is likely a necessary step to ensure a successful capture attempt when the time comes. Additionally, this approach grants SpaceX more time to finalize and refine the infrastructure for Chopsticks Pad B. As for S-35, beyond testing aspects related to the caching system, it could also serve multiple other functions, such as achieving full orbital insertion, deploying a payload, or possibly completing a full Earth orbit before returning to Starbase, a major step in refining the eventual reusability of Starship. As always, we await further updates from SpaceX, but as Elon Musk has stated, excitement is guaranteed. Returning to S-36, its movement across the production site has revealed additional interesting features. The payload section is currently covered with a protective fabric layer, and while it lacks heat shield tiles, a distinctive white coating is visible. This layer may serve as an ablative heat shield or represent another innovative upgrade. The presence of different heat protection strategies between the nose cone and the payload section suggests ongoing refinements to Starship's thermal protection system. These are just the first insights into S-36, and as production progresses, we anticipate further modifications and improvements. Meanwhile, B-17, the booster assigned to Flight 10, is also undergoing rapid development. On the 3rd of January, its common dome was sighted, followed by the arrival of the A2 section at the Mega Bay on January 4th. Later, on January 22nd, the downcomer tube was seen outside the facility. More recently, on the 11th of February, both its aft and forward sections were moved into position. With these steady advancements, B-17's stacking process appears to be proceeding efficiently, reinforcing SpaceX's commitment to maintaining an ambitious Starship launch cadence. Together, S-36 and B-17 will play crucial roles in upcoming missions, and their success could establish them as symbols of the next phase in Starship development. Shifting focus to an exciting new mission, SpaceX has been selected by NASA selected by NASA to launch the Pandora satellite. On February 10th, NASA announced that SpaceX would be responsible for deploying this groundbreaking spacecraft. 
which has a mass of 325 kilograms. According to NASA, Pandora will study at least 20 known exoplanets and their host stars, investigating how stellar variations impact the observation of exoplanetary atmospheres. SpaceX also confirmed the news on X, stating Falcon 9 to launch the Pandora small satellite to study 20 exoplanets and their host stars. Pandora will be launched as part of a rideshare mission, with the launch currently scheduled for no earlier than fall of 2025, possibly in September. NASA further elaborated on the mission's objectives, explaining that Pandora's one-year primary mission will involve observing each selected exoplanet 10 times, with each observation lasting 24 hours. The spacecraft will collect crucial data during planetary transits, events where a planet crosses in front of its host star, allowing scientists to analyze changes in both planetary and stellar characteristics. Equipped with a 45-centimeter telescope and specialized optical and infrared detectors, Pandora will have the ability to differentiate between signals from stars and planets. This capability is expected to significantly enhance the observational accuracy of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and support future exoplanet exploration initiatives, such as the agency's upcoming Habitable Worlds Observatory. Additionally, NASA disclosed that SpaceX's selection for this mission falls under the agency's Venture Class Acquisition of Dedicated and Rideshare Launch Services Contract. This program allows NASA to award fixed-price indefinite delivery slash indefinite quantity contracts over a five-year period, with a total funding cap of $300 million across all selected providers. This marks yet another exciting milestone for SpaceX as it continues to play a crucial role in cutting-edge space exploration. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration. These will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.